All right, my name is Robert Stringham, and I am teaching the EPA class for Section 608 to high school students, and I'm keeping them up to date with the current changes for the new regulations. I also put these videos up on YouTube, and uh, according to the comments, these videos have helped the tens of twenties of people. So, maybe 30. We might have helped a whole 30 people, I'm not sure. Um, but we get a lot of views, very few comments, so if this helps you, or any of these videos help you, let me know. Leave a comment, and uh, I appreciate the feedback. So these are the new charts for the evacuation requirements for the certification exam. Now, we haven't seen, as proctors, any of the test questions or any of the new updated material yet, uh, but I'm going to a conference next week down in Orlando, so I hope to find some there, some information there about it. But this has changed. Before, I used to have the kids remember almost a locker combination of 0, 4, 4, 4, 0, 10, 10, 15, and it was before November 93 and after November 93, and then we had pretty much R22 was the only refrigerant that they were talking about with the first two, and all the other refrigerants then fell into these two categories. Well, they've changed it now. So I'm going to hit the lights off, and maybe you'll be able to see this. This is available on the epa.gov website. They had this uh, little PowerPoint and a slide for this here, but they've gone now to... Uh, they didn't consider any test questions from the high pressure appliance test bank. So they didn't have any questions from the old exam on the very high pressure appliances. And the test is changing, so they might have some there. But the answer for that is if you're using equipment before 93 or after 93, regardless, it's zero. It's still zero. It was zero in the old one, and we didn't even talk about it with the old chart because that was uh, not even a, one of the test questions. But now they've broken it down instead of R22 and all other refrigerants, they've broken it down into high pressure appliances, okay, medium pressure appliances, and low pressure appliances. And then again, they still went with the less than 200 pounds of refrigerant and the more than 200 pounds of refrigerant. Less than 200 pounds of refrigerant, if the equipment has more than 200 pounds of refrigerant, then these are the vacuum rates you needed to get to. Now, if you're the residential HVAC service tech or a small appliance tech, you only need to get to zero. That's it. That's the lowest vacuum rate you need to go to. And once the recovery machine gets down to zero, you're safe to open up the appliance for a major repair. That's it. That's all you need. But if you're working with uh, commercial equipment, industrial equipment, not only did the leak rate requirements change, where it was 1535 and now it's 102030, this has also changed. So this is 10, 10, 10 for medium. If it has more than 200 pounds of refrigerant, if it has less than 200 pounds and it's medium, and then if it's medium, if it has uh, less than 200 pounds. So this one's high pressure if it has more than 200 pounds. So that's the only one that's really uh, changed a little bit. Down here, this was, I think, 15 on the other one. And then for low pressure, appliances. Those are the ones that operate below atmospheric pressure. Uh, it used to be 29 inches in mercury before and after it was absolute. Now they've changed it to both being a rating of 25 millimeters HG absolute. So you're probably going to need for this one a, a micron gauge that reads in millimeters that you can change through. Also, just want to go over what the definition of the appliances are. So a very high pressure appliance means that it has a refrigerant with a temperature at uh, with a critical temperature below 140 degrees Fahrenheit and it's got a saturation pressure above 355 PSIA. So that means they've added, remember, your gauge pressure is what you're reading on the gauge and to find absolute pressure you need to add 14.7 to that. So if I want to know what this is on gauge pressure, I would minus 14.7 or about 15 to make it easy math and that's 340 PSIG. So what type of refrigerants does this include? R13, R23, 503, 508A, and 508B. Those are your refrigerants for very high pressure appliances. They could be test questions on any of this stuff here. We don't know yet. High pressure appliances are what we mostly deal with with the 410A and the R22, but that could also include 407A, 407C, and R502 if anybody's still using any of that. But those have a, a where the boiling point was between 170 PSIA, or at 104 degrees, when it's boiling, we pressurize it to 104 degrees, then that means the boiling point is going to be between 170 PSIA and 355 PSIA. So these are the 
pressures, and this is the corresponding I would expect to find at 104 degrees, any refrigerant that falls within these two ranges of pressure readings. And then again, it's not what you read on the gauge. If you put a gauge on the tank, you still need to add the 14.7 to find the PSIA. They might come up with a better way of explaining that a little later. And then the definition of a low pressure appliance then, uh, did I skip medium? Medium. Medium pressure appliance is anything between 45, that's about 30 PSIG, and 170 PSIA. And those are ARC 114, 124, the old R12 refrigerant, and the new 134A, as well as if anybody's using R500. But that's a CFC, so that's probably phased out by now. And finally, the low pressure. These ones are the ones that operate at a vacuum almost. All of them run in a vacuum. So this would be R11, R123, R113. Now all these have both been phased out, and if they're not using an R22 chiller, then they're probably going to go with the new refrigerant, R245FA. Now included with this, but this could be, these are just examples of some refrigerants. I have from the EPA website about 700 different refrigerants listed here. So there's a lot more they can do. They can ask you a lot more questions with the EPA test. And uh, as we come out and we see what's going on to focus on with the exam, then we'll let you know what's happening and keep you up to date as best we can. But again, share this information with as many technicians as you can because as part of their certification, they're required to comply with the future changes. So if you're doing work on HVAC equipment and you're recovering it right now in 2017, you need to look to see what your vacuum rate needs to be. If you're, mostly if you're handling more than 200 pounds of refrigerant or dealing with uh, uh, high pressure or medium pressure appliances.